Hey guys, it's going to Dylan again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining again. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to invite some of you who haven't subscribed to our channel to please do so because that's really going to help me in reaching to more people in the community. And today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to do a video on Magic Leap. These videos are going to be a little bit different because I'm actually working on a game for Magic Leap. I decided not to just do prototypes anymore, but also focus on making a game for myself and also getting a game out there. But at the same time, I want to keep you up to date with what I'm doing. I want to show you the code so that this also works as a learning lesson for people that are interested in Magic Leap development. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what I have so far for the new game that I just barely announced in social media. So I'm going to go ahead and open the Magic Leap remote and also leave Unity open behind the scenes. Let me open the simulator. So I'm just going to hit start to start it. And wait until everything loads. And it should open up the basically the mini map here. And we can open up a room that I created previously to test. All right, so we have our room right here. Let me minimize this window. We don't need it. And I'm going to focus on, on two things. We're going to be looking at Unity. We're also going to be looking at the simulator so that we can simulate where you know the controller is going to be placing the structures. So if I hit play, we should start seeing the, the ML spatial mapper doing its work. You can kind of see that because the camera is looking forward, it's already mapping some of the areas, such as this is a little table, a little shelf that it's in the scene. But so what I got to do is I got to look around so that the mapping keeps going and starts mapping the couches and basically everything that, that is around the area. And I'm just going to look up and I think that's, that's plenty. All right, so we have our area map. The other thing that I, that I can do that I, that I did to this is I added bindings to the controller. So if I hit the A key, I can move the controller to the left. If I hit the D key, I can move it to the right. So this allows me to quickly test the game by using the remote without actually you know, installing this game in the device, which I'm going to do at some point, but I, may, I don't want to wait until that gets deployed and, and that takes, you know, it takes a lot of time. If I do it this way, I can easily test it, make changes, test it again, and I can, I can be more productive that way. So one thing that I want to show you is I can also tilt the controller. And you can kind of see that the target is because this is basically mapping the wall and it's mapping the floor. I have a placement, a placement script that is detecting the planes and then placing this target at, in those planes. So if I move around, you can kind of see that, you know, that is that indicator is getting moved around the around the area so if i go and, po and point it up and we go back up let me go back to there we go that's going to be on the wall so it's going to be on the floor awesome so let me show you the bindings as well so if i go to the controller bindings i'm using the control zero because this is only one controller right now and you can see that you know i have bindings for left and right down and up and then rotation and so on the ones that I want to pay attention to are the bumper and the trigger, because that's basically what I've been working on for these phase on the implementation. I, like I said, I started the game just like a day or two ago, and I'm working on the placement script, which is what you're seeing right now. This piece right here comes from that placement script that I'm implementing. The letter X is bound in that placement script, which I'm going to show you in this video, and also the trigger. So. X is going to allow me to generate a procedural a procedural building. Z is going to allow me to basically place a, a already created or already generated procedural building in the scene. So I'm just going to close out of this and show you what it really does. So and I'm just going to zoom out. And there we go. Let me just go ahead and do this one more time so that I don't lose. And we can look down. There we go. And I'm just going to say, so if I hit the X key, you can see that, there we go, it just took a little minute to, to regenerate. Let me just do it one more time. So if I do X, it's gen regenerating a procedural building and randomly. So if I do, and it looks like there's some delays right now. There we go, so that's, that's working. And so if I go and look at that building, for instance, I still have some issues 
and and I want this to be more of a log of what I'm doing and I know that I have an issue on this bounding box is the, basically the position of the building it has a little offset looks like it's not center and I need to make it a little bit bigger but the idea is that the green box it's going to be the area that is going to tell me okay right before I regenerate a new building I want to tell the user the player that that area is big enough to fit the, the generator building so the cool thing with this is I can say okay what if I want to move it to the right can I put it you know I maybe can put it on top of the couch but can I put it against the wall no I can't put it against the wall because that's really not realistic you can't really place a building you know through the wall unless it was a ghost but <laughs> this is a real building so that's what that is doing it won't let me place it there if I hit the letter Z it's not gonna let me place it there but if I go back a little bit more and I hit C now you can see that I can place the building there and in fact if I you know if I zoom in and we look around that's actually within the boundaries of that area so that tells me that you know this is working it's placing the buildings where it's supposed to place them so if I go back let's say that I didn't like that area I didn't want to put it right there I want to put it and move it maybe right let me go forward a little bit more, a little bit more, maybe right above the carpet. So I can hit Z again. And that's going to change the position of the building. You kind of see that now the building is right there. But what if I wanted to regenerate a building and this time it's, it has to be, I wanted to re regenerate a building that was a different, different size. So I'm going to hit X. And now that is a really tiny building and I should be able to basically place it in, in more locations because it's, you know, have more real estate now. I can move it around and so if I do X again I can regenerate a building and and this is really cool like it's really doing a lot of a lot of stuff behind the scenes I the the other thing that I'm gonna be working on that I have to still do is this is gonna be different levels where your your goal is to basically take take these buildings down you're gonna be acting as a demolition company so I need to be thinking about the level design how, I'm gonna, how am I going to be constraining, you know, how many how many elements the person, the demolition company that is going to be the player, it's going to have. So they might have, you know, different artifacts that they can use to demolish this building. So those are the things that I'm going to be experimenting with. I might just start with just basically allow, allowing the player to place dynamites around the buildings and based on the based on the volume on the size of the complexity and I still need to come up with an algorithm for that I'm going to be providing a certain amount of bombs so or dynamite so that's kind of the the overview idea of it so if I hit X again you can kind of see it's a much smaller building and yep I mean that's that's kind of what I have so far let me just show you some of the implementation and I'm not going to show you the procedural building implementation because that's that goes into a lot of in-depth, but I want to show you the implementation of the of what I did for Magic Leap because that's basically the main purpose of this is to show you what I did for Magic Leap and I did a video previously on this on the placement controller, so I'm basically following the same pattern from that from that video. I have a placement, and in that video I explain how these ones work, but you can that you can tell this is from the Magic Leap. From the magic leap implementation so if i go into let me go ahead and click on assets open c sharp project and i'll show you how it is set up right now so so right now i'm using so like i said on the placement controller i basically went into the examples that magic leap provided i pull in the placement the placement controller that i already had and then just basically i think this was called placement example I basically just rename it to be placement controller and then and then just made it to made it single instead of multiple game objects so this used to be an array and I explained that in that video as well I'll put it in the description of this video so that you know but I'm using their implementation I'm also using the placement visualizer which is that green bounding box that you that you see showing when when you can actually place a structure in a specific area and also if it won't fit that's when you'll see that red one this is going to be placeholders for now i want to do something a lot you know something cooler for that i i'm going to be using shader graph to apply different shaders to the will fit volume and do some animations so 
Right now, um, I think I'm okay with just green and red, but, I, but later on I'm going to be changing that and I'll do a video about the results of that as well. So another thing that I want to mention, uh, in addition to you know, using the placement controller, I am also using the ML spatial mapper to basically map the entire area. And I didn't change any of this. This is basically the default implementation and, and also the controller, which basically is what I, what I got from the controller example. So let me go to that example so you can see that I'm basically using most of the stuff that they already had. I just refactor a few things. And if we go into, we go into examples and then let's go into scenes and it's going to make this smaller so we can see. We can go into the controller. So if you go into the controller, you're going to see that it's going to follow that same pattern that I have. I am using a controller. So this has a controller visualizer, a controller handler, a controller transform, and also a feedback example. The other one that I want to show you is the place, the placement. So the placement is basically, basically has everything that I'm using on the other scene. It has a placement example. So you notice that I renamed this to be placement controller. And then instead of doing arrays, I do a single prefab because I'm only placing one structure in the build, in the, in the area. And then my placement visualizer. So very similar. All I did was just basically refactor, create a new version of placement example and rename it to placement, placement controller. And then this basically follows that same structure that I have in my own scene. So let me go back to my scene. And there we go. Let me go back into game. The other things that I that I also have in my scene is the head post canvas, which I, I've been showing you in every single video almost how that works. I also use it from the Magic Leap examples. Then the directional light, which is very common for every, you know, every different scene that Magic Leap provides. And also the main camera the Magic Leap provides that has the Magic Leap Seam Optimizer, the Magic Leap Camera Script, and also the Track Post Driver. So make sure that you're using the main camera provided by, by Magic Leap because it has the implementation that it's going to Basically, it's going to make the scene work with Magic Leap. Otherwise, it's not going to work if you don't have some of these components. So the other thing I want to show you is I also have the, if I go into the controller, and let me go back into here, and let's look at the, so now the controller, the placement controller. So if you notice, the placement controller right now has basically a controller, which is the controller handler. And I show you in the scene that I was, by using the Magic Leap Remote, that I was binding to the trigger and also binding to the bumper. So that's what I have this controller connection handler associated. And I also have a structure. So this structure is the structure that you'll, that you'll notice that I'm creating procedurally. And if I drag it and drop it, this is what I'm creating behind the scenes. And I have different, you know, different options whether to generate, you know, what the max width is going to be, the max depth, the minimum width, and then so on for the procedural building. And then the other thing that I added, so this, just pretend that this is going to be, you know, a 3D model that you have. One thing that I also added, I added a placement structure, and I use something similar to what they, they were using on the other scene. So let me just show you. The other scene, oh, okay, I remember, the other scene was using a placement object. And what I did, I, I rename it and I use my own and I call it placement structure. And all this says is just, it's just so that it knows if it needs to, you know, if it's gonna allow horizontal placement or vertical, vertically placement. So that's pretty much most of what it does. I'll show you that as well as we open up the code. And then I also have a, a structure randomizer the reason why I added this is because I I have not only I want to be able to specify you know the parameters through here but I also want to randomize some of these values and that's what the structure randomize does and then it basically exposes a randomized method so that I can call from the controller so let me go ahead and delete this and I'll show you how that works so if we go back to the placement controller that's basically what does most of the work this is what's placing the structures and I imagine, you know, having another controller that is going to 
be interacting with the structure to be able to place objects around the buildings. So I haven't really started coding that yet, but that's how I imagine that to work. So if we go into the code, let me go ahead and open up the C Sharp project. And I can show you some of the things that I that I added. So these replace the, the placement object that magically provided. And in fact, if we go and look for that, I am sure, so it's basically a copy of this placement object. I, I didn't need to do all the stuff that Magic Leap was doing, where they're going through and trying to find out you know, the mesh filters, and then based on the mesh filters, they, they calculate the bounds. So my implementation is a little bit different than theirs, but it uses, it's basically the same idea. I need to get local bounds, I need to get the horizontal, boolean and also the vertical boolean and then basically the volume as well to determine the size of the, the the size of this object and also i added a little gizmo selected as well on mine so that i could see so if we go back into unity in a drag and drop here the the yellow lines are basically the bounds and the size is what determines you know either on the width the height and the depth of this object is going to be. So let me just go ahead and delete this and go back into VS Code. So if you look at my implementation, it's very, it's very similar. It's almost a copy of it, except I, I have some additional things like I am calculating local bounds based on the procedural structure local bounds, so which I'm calculating in another script. And then some of these properties are exactly the same. And then the on draw gizmos is exactly the same, except I, I don't think that we're doing a local to world ma matrix. Let me go back and look and see. Yeah, they weren't doing that. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I also wanted to capture the rotation. So if I go in here and I drag this, and I were to rotate this, the implementation that the magically provided out of the box didn't allow didn't basically update the frame rotation so by doing this it's actually doing the rotation as well so that's you know, the only thing that i added on that then if we look at the placement controller which is the one that is doing most of the work i i did refactor this one quite a bit to be honest the so but i can walk you through pretty quick the controller the controller connection handler this is the one that is going to interact with the basically to determine if the controller is connected or not. And then it's going to be binding. It's also gonna allow me to bind the ML input and trigger down with different functions that are the different events that I am binding to. So the way that it works is, you know, if the ML input and trigger down is executed, I'm going to call, and I also did a video on this on how, you know, you can bind to, to an event and how you can unbind from an event. And in fact, I'm also seeing an issue here, which I need to fix. Let me do that right now. Awesome, so so but the way that it works is, so I'm binding to these two methods, right? I'm binding to the trigger button, and I'm also binding to the, to the, to the button down. So if those two, if one of those is executed, so if you look at handle on button down, that's when I'm basically placing placing a, placing a structure. So by default, I'm just gonna say, okay, this is gonna be just a preview placement. And I'm also gonna check to make sure that the, the button that I'm, that I'm holding, that I'm, that I'm pressing is the bumper. So if I press the bumper on the controller, I execute the preview placement. Preview placement there then go, calls into a create placement preview object. And then the preview object just basically creates a, it creates an instance of the placement prefab, which happens to be the structure. And then, and then what I do, it's just basically calculate some of the bounds, the position of that object, and then also the rotation of the object. And then I'm doing some mathing here because I have some issues with the way that I calculated the, the bounds of the structures of the procedural structure. So just basically subtracting some things and this might be a hacky way to do it. I, I need to find a better way, but for now that works. I might need to resize resize a little bit because I want people, the bounding box doesn't, 
basically I want the structure to be inside the green box and it doesn't look like it's it, that that math it's 100% accurate so I still need to fix that and then but basically this just creates a, an object so that we can preview it before we actually place it the the other thing that I do in here is I also get an instance of the randomizer and then I randomize the structure so this is what I'm placing when I'm pressing the, the letter X. So if we go back in here, the letter X is bound to the bumper, like I show you on the Magic Lit Remote. Then when I hit that, I'm going to randomize the structure. And that's going to create a new structure. It's going to create a new green box. And then green or red box, if, the, if it happened to be within an area that it can be placed, it'll be red. So that's what this one does. And then I basically call the placement that place if you know if it if it fits within that area. And then the other thing that I do as well, once I'm happy with you know the location that where I want to put the where I want to put the structure, then I call the trigger the handle on trigger down, which I bound to the letter Z, as I show you in the Magic Leap remote. And what that does, it calls the placement that confirm. So you so you know the placement that confirm is the one that is going to tell this guy right here if I go down and you look at the you, you look at the callback I was I wasn't sure why this wasn't getting called so this handle placement complete is only going to get called when you call the confirm on the placement so and that's going to be true as long as so let me show you let me show you what it does cuz I had a lot of issues with this too wasn't sure why it wasn't so if the structure that you're trying to fit within an area has this basically has this enum meaning that it, it fits within that area it then calls the callback if it doesn't fit so in the instances where when it was read this this won't be of that type of enum and, and basically it won't even call the callback because it doesn't fit in, the, in that area and if you notice I also have Magic Leap is already doing some of the calculation here but they also have there's different di different types of fit types so if i go into the enums of that you can now see okay the fit type is unknown the fit type is it fits no surface uneven overhang so you can extend this and say okay you know i'm going to if i confirm and you know if it fits then 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 you're okay because that's going to be what magic leap is implementing but if you want to say, okay, this is on the running orientation, or if it's overhang and you want to do some other things, so those are the times when you might need to add a little bit of extendability to Magic Leap implementation. So, but out of the box, if you call the placement that confirm, and you know that that shape fits within the boundaries, then you're going to be guaranteed that, it's, that this callback is going to get called. So if that callback gets called, and we created a placement prefab which we did then we set this place equal true which means that in the update method I am checking to see you know if it has been placed if it hasn't been placed that's okay I can update that so that's why I can move the 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 preview structure around it's because at that point it hasn't been placed but if it has been placed this is gonna be as soon as that gets set to true the I'm not going to be changing the position anymore because the user decided to place it at a specific location so that's what this does that boolean then the last thing that I do I basically just set the the placement previous structure to have the final location and that's where it basically puts the that's what basically puts the structure at the final location and then I say placement that resumes so that we can basically start over the loop and if I hit the letter Z, then I can change the location of the existing structure. So that's why that's when you saw when I did. So we go back here and we hit we go into Unity. Just open it up so that I can show you. I'll show you that interaction one more time so that you can see so you can see how that works. And you see play and there we go. Let's go back into Magic Leap Remote. And I can basically, let me use A to move it around. So I'm going to hit the letter X to create a new random. It looks like I have a bug in there because when I hit X for the first time, it was it was offset. 
so I have to fix that. There we go, and there we go. So I think I still have some problems. There we go. So if I move it around, you can see that. So that is calling the update and changing the position of the structure. So if I hit the letter Z, now I place the structure in place. But if I hit Z again, I can change the. The reason why what I, what it allows me to do that is because when I place it, I set the value of place equal to true meaning that the update method is not going to update the, the position of this guy. But if I hit Z again, it's going to do, it's not going to call the up, it's not going to change the position based on the update, but it's going to call basically this line right here, where I call the callback and the callback changes the final position. So, so that's basically all I have so far, guys. I'm going to be showing you a lot more as I work more on the game. Thank you, guys. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me in Patreon where I'm posting videos and early access to source code. So thank you very much, guys.